Okay, so this is an idea that I'm probably going to expand upon in more detail and another time, but this just hit me because I was re-watching the uh, Destiny teaser trailer. Well, the Destiny 2 teaser trailer that was recently released. You know, the one where Cade's talking about how shit basically hit the fan, and from what you can see in the trailer, the tower basically got kiboshed. But either way... It lines up with uh, a article I was reading before where they were mentioning that in Destiny 2, what Bungie had confirmed so far was that the aesthetics of your character would carry over, like your actual character would carry over to the next game, but <laughs> uh, your vehicles, your gear, your powers and abilities, um, your shaders, your colors, all of that stuff all of your inventory, everything that you have worked for and fought for and sweat for and bled for throughout the entirety of Destiny's run currently in the first iteration of the game is going to be wiped out. You're going to be starting from square one, with the exception of the fact that obviously your character that you have made is going to continue on in the second installment of the franchise. And when I first read about this, and I kind of figured it would involve something along the lines of the tower being destroyed. I was really kind of annoyed because I'm thinking like, wow, there's like been, what, three years worth of putting time into this game with friends, having fun, running through raids, doing strikes and bounties and all that good stuff. Uh, holiday events, um, various, you know, promotional things that would pop up now and then the um, the SRL races, the Iron Banner, uh, the. Destiny equivalent of Halloween and uh, Christmas time and all that fun stuff. All of that rendered like kind of pointless at first glance. But it hit me just a few moments ago. The reason I'm recording this, I like it. I really, really like it. Obviously, they were going to have to do something like that for the second game because otherwise you're just taking a bunch of godly overpowered people and dumping them into a game that they could kind of crush but it makes perfect sense to me for how I like my games once I had some time to digest all of that process it that's what I love it's one of the things that I love about the Fallout games and the Elder Scroll games is the initial grind where you are just dumped into this world with nothing and you have to work your way up that grind, that struggle, knowing that you are just fighting against increasingly insurmountable odds and you are just going to have to buckle down. You're going to have to have a combination of skill, perseverance, and luck to even have a chance of making it. You're probably going to screw up a million times, but eventually you're going to get that right combination of timing, luck, skill, gear, and maybe some people on your fire team, and you're going to push through it. And you're going to win and you're going to succeed. And that's on to the next hurdle. And you just keep doing that and that and that. And then you finally reach a mountain and that's the raid. You get even more of your friends together or maybe a few strangers and you conquer that one and so on and so forth. And wash, rinse, repeat. And it's a great big grind. And if I really wanted to go deeper into that, you could link up that idea of persevering against struggle to life. But we're not going to go that deep right now. Keeping it on a surface level, it's what I enjoy about games in general, and I find that when I reach a point in a game like Fallout, like The Elder Scrolls, once I hit a level where I am just, you know, swinging a sword and taking out five guys at once, a wave of my hand and, like, all the enemies are just dropping dead, I'm essentially, like, you know, a death god with feet just trudging my way through the world and blowing aside anything that dares to step in my way. The game kind of loses something. I don't feel I don't feel that struggle anymore. Like I'm at the top and there's no one who can beat me. It's not fun. You know, like you think, ah yeah, I want to get to the top, but it's that old adage of like, yeah, but you know, then you weep because there's no more worlds left to conquer, right? That's it. What do you do next? What can you do next? So Although on the surface it kind of feels like a bit of a cheap shot, it makes sense. And although I'm going to be kind of sad to see all my hard-earned gear and stuff leave, I'm excited. I am excited. More than anything, I hope that from a narrative storytelling perspective, they offer a reason within the game that is acceptable. 
not just something like, you know, ah, well, you know, we lost your stuff. What can I say? Shit happens, right? Like, I hope it is something you can appreciate, like just the absolute utter annihilation of the tower. Like there is nothing left. There is no way to recover anything from that. Like they're lucky they were able to get you out of there, let alone any of your gear. And you should be happy that that was enough because they almost weren't able to save you. That kind of thing that I would appreciate because then it's like, okay, I know, (laughs) I know under the surface, you needed a reason to put us back to zero to make the game a challenge again. But if you present it in a narrative that we can appreciate and accept and above all helps to motivate us on top of the story as it continues, then I think that's perfectly acceptable. And like I said, if nothing else, that's added motivation to get out there and start back from zero. And okay, I'll, I'll, I'll delve a little deep into that because I mean, very, very similar to life itself. Shit can happen. Things can go bad. You can lose damn near everything. Maybe you do lose everything, but you can still recover. It's going to take you some time. You're definitely not going to get back to the level that you were at tomorrow or the day after that or in a month or in a year. But if you buckle down, if you work at it, if you persist, if you grind, eventually you can reclaim some of that former glory. And maybe along the way, you're going to find something else. And by the time you reach to that point where you're as good as you were before, you'll look in the mirror and find out you're actually even better. Getting a little bit romantic and philosophical there at the end, but that was something that I really wanted to get out, not off my chest, because that sounds like I have a problem with it, and I don't. So an, an idea I wanted to get out of my head. I mean, I'm going to have to wait and see what the game actually has to offer, because <laughs> like I mentioned with the whole pre-order kind of rant, there's always the potential that the game might not be good. Don't know yet. But let's assuming that it's at the very least no worse than its predecessor. It's going to be an interesting, uh, it's going to be an interesting turn when Destiny 2 finally graces us with its presence. But that's a discussion for another time when it finally shows up. So until next time, my name's Rye. You guys take care of yourselves.